it's me Jay and I can't believe it's almost a year since my very first vlog um, I remember it was last uh, it was August and I showed you a glimpse of my workplace here in Taiwan as a teacher in one of the private schools with an international department um, now it's the end of the school year and this is my last week in school actually well the school ended last week uh, June 30th all public schools and private schools follow the same calendar so the last day was June 30 but it was just it's just me staying in the school for another week just to complete all the housekeeping um, routine before I leave for summer vacation I'm just taking a break and waiting for one, two teachers um, who wants to check out. They're leaving uh, our school and wanting to go back to the U.S. So to check them out, uh, make sure that all the grades and everything, all the documentation that they need to complete are all done before they leave the school. And so while I'm doing that, while I'm waiting, I'm thinking of you know having this kwentuhan muna on things like the differences between private school and public schools um and other stuff like what are the th things that we do here in private school i think one distinct characteristic of or let's say one of the biggest difference between a public school and a private school here in taiwan is the english program in public schools, students learn English in a very limited time just within the confinement of the classroom. So typically, they're only given two periods per week. That is if they did not um, change that when they reformed the curric curriculum two years ago. But um, from what I know, uh, students learn English language in a very limited time, two periods per week or maximum probably uh, three periods per week whereas in private schools students learn the language through immerse, uh, immersion we call that as immersive language learning so aside from the limited time another difference within the English program is the skills that foreign teachers teach the kids now in public schools the focus of the foreign teachers is to develop or train students to speak fluently or speak fluent English and improve their listening skills. Whereas the other macro skills, the reading and the writing, that is mostly covered by the, uh, by the Chinese English teachers or the local teachers. The reason is because reading and writing, that is also, those are component in the national test so there's a certain amount there's a certain uh, accountability in terms of the english ability so they want the foreign teachers to train students to speak fluently but in terms of test taking um or test english testing that is which is reading and writing that is covered by the local teachers so the expectations if you're going to compare uh, teaching in public schools and teaching in private schools the expectations in public school is much lesser than the private schools for one you will only focus if you're teaching in public schools you will only focus on the speaking and the listening skills um i well i'm not saying that you're not going to teach reading and writing you will because well english should uh, have all those mac four macro skills but the focus on or your you will be asked to give emphasis on the conversation uh, speaking and listening skills rather than the reading and writing because that's covered by another teacher and and then you also have limited time with your students um, probably you'll be teaching different classes per week so maybe one class of grade five one class of grade three one class of grade four one so different levels in just one week because you have to cover your minimum teaching hours and uh, that's probably around like 2025 20, or yeah around around that teaching load that is quite different from if you're teaching in private schools because in private schools uh, different private schools have different kind of English program, but the most common is the ESL program or the, um, yes, the ESL program. 
and for some schools they give they allocate five periods per week um, for the English uh, language some some schools even give like seven periods a week or ten periods a week uh, and then you have teachers are expected to cover all macro skills that is to speaking listening writing and reading you're also expected to give assessments to grade them and to give progress report by maybe by term or by semester so that expectations are much more if than if you're teaching in public school another difference between the public and the private schools is the whole curriculum framework in public schools of course it's expected that they are going to follow the national curriculum as mandated by the ministry of education and they do have like a a very comprehensive um, national curriculum english language is just a part of that and it's considered as a my it's a major subject um no it's a minor subject for for elementary um students but not in junior high and senior That's high right. private schools they offer private schools offer what we call the alternative curriculum in taiwan education public schools follow the national curriculum and this within the national curriculum there are specific courses there uh, that is offered by year level in international division the alternative curriculum can offer similar courses that are under the same academic discipline take for example for social studies discipline uh, academic discipline so in national curriculum maybe in grade 9 or all grade 9 students need to complete um, history of Taiwan that is the requirement by the uh, national curriculum or yeah the national framework but in the alternative curriculum for international division they can offer other courses as long as it's within the social studies academic discipline so that's what makes it more flexible or that's what makes international system more flexible than the public school system and aside from uh, this required courses private schools can also offer more supplementary courses uh, more clubs because they have more resources for guidance a lot of private schools here in taiwan follows the north american curriculum uh, which means that the courses and the sequence of those courses are the same as what you can see from a typical U.S. Um, school system. Take, for example, in the field of sciences. So in grade 7, offer the school offers life science, um, grade 8, physical science, grade 9, biology, grade 10, chemistry, grade 11, physics, and grade 12, another science elective. So that's the typical course sequence of the science department in, uh, in the U.S., most of the private schools here in the in Taiwan follows the same sequence, but um, recently I noticed that uh, more schools are adopting other curriculum frameworks from other countries like Canadian curriculum or UK system, um, and there's even one school I think in the cent in central or south that is offering the Finland curriculum. I think because of the government's initiative of this initiative of the government called the bilingualism 2030 and the aggressive hiring of the MOE the spotlight is now on the public schools but actually um, private schools are expanding there's so many private schools you know like developing their international department or international divisions and hiring uh, foreign teachers as well and a good thing is that it's not only limited to English teaching um, but, of course, from what I've mentioned before, the expectations for teachers in private schools are much more than that of the public school. Because there's so many private schools here and it depends on, um, as I've mentioned earlier, different tier of private schools, there's different expectations as well. So in high-end private schools, there will be more expectations in terms of documenting your the teaching and the learning process and the assessment and you're also um, expected to provide timely feedback uh, progress report and depending on which curriculum framework the private school 
adopts uh, you have to follow that uh, some private school adopt um, state standards so the curriculum is standard based rather than textbook based um, kind of curriculum which actually most of the private schools are still doing that um, what I mean is they teach based on the textbook so aside from the documentation uh, the whole learning the teaching and learning environment is very similar to that of the, of, a, of an international school so everything is in english uh, except for chinese classes club time um what else other supplementary courses are all in english as much as possible and for some private schools which are uh, that are accredited by um, international accrediting bodies then it will have more expectations because there are certain requirements that schools need to comply as part of the accountability and commitment to that um, accreditation body uh, in terms of specialized programs um, private schools as i've mentioned earlier private schools adopts different uh, programs in some private school they adopt the ib middle years program which is for middle school from grade 6 to grade 10 or from grade 6 to grade 9 or grade 7 to grade 10. Um, that is i think that's the, the most trending program nowadays in here in asia the ib programs Teachers in private schools are also given um, continuous professional development. Some private schools at the higher end even give professional development budget for teachers to spend um, in workshops or you know buy books so to, to help them develop professionally. Other private schools don't do that, um, of course, because of their limited resources. Aside from the professional development, um, some private schools also give more leave pay or leave days, um, paid leave days, depending on the number of years um, you work in that specific private schools or private school. And of course, the salary. Uh, the thing is, again, it depends on the private school, the resources within uh, in that private school but private schools higher end private schools offer quite competitive salary package um, higher than that of the basic salary or the salary package offered by the public schools some private schools offer basic salary of more than 75 000 nt as the entry um, salary for those with bachelor's degree only and then with master's degree that's around 80, 80 to 85,000 and there would be added uh, monetary compensation with uh, according to the number of teaching experience whereas for other private schools they offer much lower than um, or 60 around that because public schools now the base salary for public school is around 62 to 65 so it would only make sense well i even heard private some private schools offering much lower than that but that is because they have very low enrollment so i guess as long as you're not um receiving way below than the um foreign worker compensation which is about 48,000 but even so the standard or the norm here in Taiwan is that teachers should be receiving 65,000 uh, um, 65, NTD per month and that's the base salary and the last thing I want to talk about is the teacher evaluation in public schools teachers are evaluated I'm not so sure if it's after every uh, every sem or at the end of the school year but they do uh, they are evaluated and if you reach the highest rating then you are given a performance bonus equivalent to a month of salary 
if you are lower than that, there's a specific uh, monetary compensation um, for specific rating. And that's for public schools only. Private schools, there's no performance bonus as big as uh, similar to um, the public schools, but other schools, uh, but for other private schools, they do give performance bonus, but not as much as five or 10,000 NT, I think per month maybe, or every three months. Um, that is because in private schools, there are other benefits um, aside from performance bonus. Some private schools don't even have a concrete evaluation program. I'm not so sure how they do their stuff, but other schools like our school, we do have a well-defined and concrete evaluation program, which includes um, feedback from students, from parents, from, other, from administration. Uh, we call that as a 360 degree um, evaluation program. So that makes teachers more mindful of, of their job, I think. That's because every stakeholder within the community are given the voice to um, give constructive feedback to rate teachers' performance and at the same time, administra administrators are also um evaluated so yeah i think that's it um if you have other questions or if you have some topic that you want me to discuss um about taiwan education system feel free to comment and or feel free to message me so yeah i think that ends our kwentuhan and um it's time for me to go back to work and finish all my stuff because I'm leaving this week this is my last week and I can't wait to go home to the Philippines for my summer vacation bye